Hello and welcome back to the Tech Blackboard. Today we start part 4 of our DP900 real exam question series. If you wish to watch the earlier three parts, the link for the entire playlist is now available in the i button above and in the description box below. Until part 3, we have covered question number 42. Let's begin with question number 43. This says that you need to ensure that users use multi-factor authentication MFA when connecting to an Azure SQL database. Which type of authentication should you use? Now let's see the option. So the first option is service principle authentication. Service principle authentication has nothing to do with multi-factor authentication. Then moving on Azure Active Directory or Azure AD authentication. Now this looks a valid option to us, but looking at the other two options, SQL authentication, which is more used to log in into the SQL database. So this is also not a correct option. Then certificate authentication is also not used for the multi-factor authentication. Thus the correct answer is Azure Active Directory authentication. Okay. Now let's move to our question number 44. In this one, it asks that you need to design and model a database by using a graphical tool that supports project-oriented offline database development. What should you use? The options given here are Microsoft SQL Server Data Tools or SSDT, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio or SSMS, the third one is Azure Databricks or the fourth one Azure Data Studio. Now remember the important words here or the important things to note here are graphical tool that supports project oriented offline database. Offline is very important here because this will help you to find out the answer as well. So if you look at the options given here, Azure Data Studio, Azure Databricks and SSMS or Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio all the three options b c d are online so they do not so they do not provide offline capabilities thus the correct answer for this one is ssdt moving on we have question number 45 in the question number 45 you have a transactional application that stores data in an azure sql managed instance what should you implement a read only when should you implement a read only database replica so in this one important things are that you have a managed sql data instance then you have to implement a read only database replica right so you have to tell that when should you do that should you do when you need to generate reports without affecting the transactional workload or when you need to audit transaction application or the C1, the C part is you need to implement high availability in the event of regional outage or the fourth option given is you need to improve recovery point objective. Looking at the option recovery point objective, this, this is definitely not related to implementing a read only database replica. This re RPO and RTO are more related to the recovery of the database. Then when you need to implement high availability, definitely not. We are just talking about read only replica, right? Audit is also out of question because it has nothing to do with implementation of read only. Then the obvious choice left with us is that you need to generate report without affecting transactional load. So this is the correct answer. Moving on with our question number 46, it asks that you need to create an Azure resource to store data in Azure table storage. Which command should you run? Now looking at the options given here, I can easily tell you the correct answer for this one is the option D, which is AZ storage container create. Okay. 
Now let's move to our question number 47. In question number 47, you are given with the chart, which is your company recently reported sales for the third quarter. You have the chart below. So you can see this is a chart. It goes down and then it goes up and you can see this gray area here. So this one is the actual figure or the present figure and this one is the future. So let's see what the question asks. Which type of analysis is shown in the fourth quarter? You can see this is the fourth quarter. The earlier three quarters are marked by this bluish line and the fourth quarter is actually shown in this gray area. So which kind of analysis is this? Is this a predictive, prescriptive, descriptive or diagnostic? We have already discussed this many times in our previous videos that this is a predictive analysis because we are predicting it for the future. We are predicting it for the next quarter, fourth quarter. We are already in third quarter and we are predicting it for the fourth quarter. That's why this is a prediction. So the correct answer is predictive analysis. Moving on with the question number 48. This says relational data is stored in is it stored in a file system as an unstructured data or is it stored as a hierarchical folder structure or a tabular format or a tabular form of rows and columns or comma separated value or CSV. Now if you look at the relational table or the relational data tables you will see these tables are very close to uh, excel files. So in excel also we store the data in rows and columns and in tables also we store the data in rows and columns. So the correct answer for this would be tabular form of rows and columns. Moving on with our question number 49. The question number 49 asks you that a block of code that runs in a database is called a stored procedure, a table, a view or an index. Now if you look at the index, index is a DB object that help you optimize or make a query faster. Okay, A view is something where you store a query and you can run or users can run this query again and again and produce the result. Then a table is something which actually stores the data. So the real data is contained in a table. A stored procedure on the other hand is a block of code and that can be executed in the database. So the correct answer for this question would be a stored procedure. Moving on with our question number 50. It says that your company needs to implement a relational database in Azure. The solution must minimize ongoing maintenance. Which Azure service should you use? Should you use Azure HD Insight, Azure SQL Database, Azure Cosmos DB or SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machine? Now look at the options carefully. Starting with the option number D, Azure Server on Azure Virtual Machine. The important point in the question is that you should minimize ongoing maintenance. Thus, it cannot be Azure Virtual Machine because you have to do all the maintenance for the virtual machine, not the Cosmos DB as well because this is a relational database, not the HD Insight as well. Thus, because I've already mentioned it's a relational database, now we are only left with one option and that is option number B which says Azure SQL database which exactly is the right option for this question. Hope you liked the part 4 of DP900 series. Don't miss the part 5 with more interesting questions coming up. If this video has added any value in your learning, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Share this video in your family and friends to spread and expand their learning. Your comments and feedback give me a chance to interact with you and I look forward for them. We will meet again in our next video. Till then, stay fit, keep learning and thanks for watching.